Hi everyone. Before we start this panel discussion, we hope that all of you, our panelists as well as our listeners, are keeping safe amidst everything that's taking place all around us. My name is Tarindi Thalahiti and I will be your moderator for this particular panel discussion. Now, the purpose of this panel discussion is to really talk about the higher education opportunities that are available for Sri Lankans. Now, higher education is not only about the academic and professional qualifications which one would get that would set you up against everyone else and really excel your professional journey. But in addition to this, it's also about creating a cultural hub where different people, different students rather, from different parts of the world come together to really grow their network and develop a variety of skills which is important for them to excel in today's dynamic job market. However, with the onset of COVID-19, this ecosystem has collapsed. And due to this reason, many students are really unsure about what their next step would be when it comes to acquiring a qualification and pursuing their higher education. Due to this reason, ANC Education has organized the ANC Global Education Fair 2021 with universities that are recognized from different parts of the world. And here to talk today a bit about the fair and also answer your burning questions that students would have with regards to their higher education is ANC Education along with a few of their university representatives. Here with us is Mr. Jay Lewis, Director of Strategic Global Initiatives at Northern Arizona University. Now, Northern Arizona University is a top public university ranked number 144 in top public schools and ranked 284 in national universities. We also have here with us Mr. Brent Krimportich, Director of Enrollment Management and International Operations, Algoma University, Canada. Algoma is an undergraduate only public university in Ontario, Canada, and is one of the top universities which is sought after by international students to study in Canada. We also have Mr. Peter L. Mayadun, Director, Sri Lanka Country Officer for Deakin International. Deakin University is ranked in the top 1% of universities globally by the academic ranking of World Universities 2020. We also have here with us two representatives from ANC Education, Mr. Danushan Karpaya, Senior Manager, Undergraduate Enrollment for US, Canada, Australia and Medical Placements. We also have Ms. Akshara Mutaraj, Assistant Manager, Direct Placement, USA and Canada for ANC Education. Thank you everyone for taking the time off to be here with us for this panel discussion. Let's dive right into it. So one of the main reasons to have this discussion is to really talk about the higher education opportunities which is available for students here in Sri Lanka. So Danushan, could you tell me a bit about this particular fair and what students from ANC can really expect out of it? The, to talk about the fair, this is going to be a global education fair. So the word global is going to bring in universities from most parts of the world where Sri Lankan students are predominantly interested. Um, US, Canada, Australia, uh, UK. So this is going to be an ideal platform for students from any ages, from undergraduate to postgraduate to come in, meet some university representatives and get details on studying overseas, especially during uh, a pandemic time. You know, we are all experiencing it. It's not gone away. Hopefully it does. So one thing that's always very important to note is education doesn't wait. Well, we will keep aging every day. So it's important to um, upgrade yourselves and make sure we choose the right path in terms of country uh, and uh, this will give you an ideal platform to choose the university the major and look out for options like scholarships uh, like your majors that are in demand so this is going to be an ideal platform for everyone in all age groups talking about programs at ANC um, last in the last 19 years we placed students uh, through our transfer program uh, to the US and Canada and Australia as well so in terms of numbers we are talking about over 2,000, 2,500 students to all these parts of the world. So we have a strong alumni network, which uh, is going to benefit students from Sri Lanka because they have some, they have someone in terms of seniors to look up to, or they can always talk to a student to get more detail. Just to brief about our programs, you can do the first two years of your degree here and transfer to the US or Canada. You can do one year or even two years here for engineering and transfer to Australia to various about 12 universities and in terms of US we do have uh, students play being there in about 100 150 universities so as you know US is a huge um, international student um, crowd pull I would say so over 2000 universities and colleges and uh, we have placed over 100 uh, to students to over 100 universities 
and again Canada, over 20 universities that have transferred, uh, students have transferred from ANC in the last, I would say, 15 years. So, like Mr. Brent earlier mentioned, Ontario has become a very popular area and we do work with a lot of universities in Ontario as well. So, in uh, talking about programs at ANC for an undergraduate student, that would be it. So students who do not want to maybe go overseas due to various factors, uh, they can actually do the first, the whole degree in Sri Lanka uh, in partnership with Northwood University in the US or uh, for business management. And uh, with Northern Arizona University, we have Mr. Jay here. Uh, we, have, we offer the only US psychology degree in Sri Lanka. So students are able to do their degree, but graduate from Northern Arizona University, which is a very well ranked reputed university and they will get the same certificate from the university. So it's the American experience in Sri Lanka at a very affordable cost. So that is something that ANC is very focused on. You get quality education at affordable cost, which will cost you know more maybe when you go there, if that is not your plan. But yes, otherwise our transfer program is still the best in terms of student numbers and quality. Uh, so come join us, uh, you will get to uh, network and meet a lot of students who have gone uh, to US, Canada or Australia or about to leave. So that's the whole ex ANC experience that's offered in our campus in Colombo and Candy. Right. And could you tell me a bit about how this particular fair will be conducted? Is it going to be online and how can students get more information about it? Good question because uh, we at ANC have been conducting fairs uh, of this nature for a long time. It's always been physical, uh, but we also tried it being hybrid but only the university side uh, last year and this year but now with the current uh, restrictions it's impossible to gather so we've completely moved online we are going to do a virtual fair with an interactive room where students can be in the waiting room and meet the university representatives and yeah. ANC representatives so that is going to be a bit of a you know challenge for all of us but yes we are looking forward to it and it's, it's going to be really good. I'm sure students will be able to take their time and speak to uh, their representatives uh, what they wish for. And could you tell me a bit about the type of students and parents who would be typically interested in this fair? Um, so like I uh, mentioned earlier, this is going to be a fair for undergraduate and postgraduate. So we're not restricting anyone. Anyone at, from the age of, I would say, 16 plus, 17 plus until right. whenever they want to do masters or even PhD. Okay. So this is right. going to target everyone. This is going to be interactive and informative for everyone who's looking at higher education. It can be in Sri Lanka, overseas, because at ANC, we do have a vast range of programs. Um, we are proud to say we are the only conglomerate in Sri Lanka to start from preschool to postgraduate education. So you can look at any program within our um, whole uh, branch and uh, this will mainly focus on students looking at going overseas for their education. So that is uh, going to cover people from 16 plus like I mentioned. Right, okay. And I think one of the most important factors that students take into consideration, especially when it comes to their higher education, is the financial side of things. So um, is ANC considered expensive? And if so, what sort of costs are associated with degree programs for students? A very good question because I think People might outside might think ANC is expensive, but also with expensive comes good quality. So that's something that we have been um, providing throughout our 19 years in existence. Um, ANC has seen over 10,000 students who have graduated locally and transferred overseas and graduated at their respective universities. So in terms of cost, we do have different programs to cater different student needs and their budget requirements. So right. again, this fair is going to be critical and very important for students when uh, they can actually look at their budget and set it, especially in these times where there's a lot of challenge budget-wise. So students have options of uh, doing part of the program and then going overseas, directly going overseas, completing the entire degree in Sri Lanka and maybe going for masters or a master and then looking for work options uh, overseas. So you can, you name it, you know, we will cater to any part of uh, your requirement. And in terms of cost, again, we do have uh, scholarships up to 500, 600,000 for undergraduate students. And also universities offer very handsome scholarships if you have good grades all over the world. And um, so we do have a very good um, payment plan as well that is going to help students throughout their education in case they choose ANC as their study partner. It's not just the cost, but then again, with cost also comes great quality. So that's what we focus on all the time. 
Okay, right. Um, so my next question goes out to Mr. J. So US is considered number one for education. And according to the QS World University ranking in the year 2021, the top four universities out of 10 are from the US. Tell me a bit about how the US has managed to sustain that particular position. Sure, thank you for the question. So I think, I think honestly, it's probably a variety of factors. Um, one of the main factors uh, is decentralization. Uh, so unlike in many other countries around the world, there's not uh, a Ministry of Education in the United States that uh, instructs all, all the universities in the country what to do. Um, we do have a Department of Education, um, but we think that the decentralization is one thing that really helps universities across the country be very responsive to regional goals, and it also helps us be uh, very innovative. The second thing I would say is probably the focus on the liberal arts. And this is a tradition that goes back all the way to, to the beginning of Western civilization right. in ancient, ancient Greece. Um, so in the US, you're going to take um, you're going to take a variety of subjects in your undergraduate career. So this is different from the system in a lot of countries where um, if you want to be a mechanical engineer, for example, you take three years of mechanical engineering courses and then you're done. Right. Um, in the US, even as uh, a future engineer, you're also going to take a lot of courses in the social sciences and the humanities. We think that that leads to more well-rounded people. Uh, and that's very important because um, we see one of the goals of higher education to yes, prepare you for your career, prepare you for a job in the market economy, um, but we also want to be training students to become active participants in the democracy. Right. Um, and the third, um, although there are many, the, th the third that I'll talk about today um, is just the, the concept of a research university. Um, so I'm glad that you mentioned those rankings. If you, if you look at the top uh, U.S. universities on those rankings, most of them are research universities. And what this means is that um, our primary goal is teaching, but as institutions, there's also a focus on research. So we have expert faculty making scientific discoveries every day in real time. Uh, students in all disciplines uh, get to benefit from that. Um, here at Northern Arizona University, um, obviously at the graduate level, there's uh, the ample opportunities for um, student research. Um, but even at the undergraduate level, um, here at NAU, you'll find a lot of opportunities to get involved early on in labs of some of the preeminent uh, scholars, scientists, and researchers uh, in the country. All right, thank you, Mr. J. Um, moving on to Canada. So, Mr. Friend, um, Canada has actually become one of the most sought after study destinations in the world. What would you say is the most appealing factor about studying in Canada, especially for a Sri Lankan student? Uh, yeah, there's lots of factors. And I actually just saw a uh, statistic this week that the province of Ontario that um, the university is located in is the number one destination in the world for international students right now for a particular right. jurisdiction. But there's lots of reasons. I think number one is the quality of the education in the country. And Jay mentioned the diversity of the system in the US. I think there's also strengths to um, our system where it's a public system um, almost exclusively. So you don't have to be concerned about the quality of the education at any one university. You know, if you're choosing a university in Canada, you can be assured you're getting a degree that will take you anywhere in the world in terms of masters or, or job opportunities. Second, I mean, Canada is a very welcoming, diverse country. Canada is a, a country of immigrants. Almost half of Canadians were born somewhere else. Even during the pandemic, our borders have remained open to international students. So it's a, you know, it's a wonderful place to live, but it's also a wonderful place to be a student. We really embrace that diversity. Um, affordability, um, part of that comes from the um, publicly funded nature of our system, but I think also um, the currency wise, Canadian currency is not quite as expensive as some others. So. Uh, when you compare us to a lot of other destinations, it's affordable. And lastly, I just think the, the ability to um, live and work post-graduation. Canada wants international students and we want them to not just come here to study, but we want them to stay and work and maybe even eventually become Canadian. So I think all of those things together make us a, a top destination now. 
All right, okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Brenda. That was very interesting. Moving on to Australia, we have Mr. Peter here with us. Um, so, in Australia, almost all the university programs have moved online. So, could you tell me a bit about the majors which are offered online and also about how certain discounts could be applied to students now that they're studying online? Uh, thanks, thanks for the question. Um, yeah, in terms of majors, I think that's an interesting one. Um, with, uh, I mean, I can't of course speak for all universities in Australia, but um, I'm, it's safe to say that uh, for most of the universities, they are offering a majority of their programs online. The, the, the types of degrees that um, are not offered online are those that have certain accreditation elements, like say for instance, uh, say teaching degrees, nursing, medicine type um, uh, degrees, they, they come with some type of accreditation from an industry body and that makes it somewhat challenging to offer it, offer it online from, from overseas. So I think that's the hurdle that most uh, institutions are facing at the moment. But then a majority of courses I think are offered uh, via the online mode. So I think for Sri Lankan students, what they ought to do is go to the respective university websites and then do a search for what programs are offered online as, as a search. I, I think it's uh, fair to say initially most institutions were uh, somewhat reluctant to offer any type of discount for uh, online study. And that was I think primarily because um, to offer a discount would have been really agreeing with the market sentiment initially that uh, an online product is somewhat inferior to the face-to-face -face option. And I think what most institutions around the world wanted to um, convey was that the online product, the online learning option is in no way inferior to face-to-face -to -face learning but it's just a different uh, way of teaching. However, as uh, COVID progressed I think there was a realization that uh, it wasn't just individuals, families, but uh, whole economies were facing the impact uh, of uh, COVID. So most universities now um, have taken that into account and are offering concessions. And for, for instance, my own university, Deakin University offers a 25% discount for the period that they would study online from Sri Lanka. Right. So I think, I think that, and that's been, uh, very helpful and uh, you know welcome uh, in the market. Right, and taking the current situation into consideration as well, um, there are many students who have been interested in studying medicine. And if I'm not mistaken, AMC has been handling a lot of medicine placement um, programs for students who are interested in that particular field as well. So what advice would you give to Sri Lankan students who are looking to pursue their career as well as their academic journey in medicine? Medicine has always been a very um, popular choice for a student. I mean, I would have said that 10, I wanted to be a doctor. So you will see a lot of people, a lot of students, you know, trying to you know, be a doctor, especially now where uh, doctors are required all over the world. You know, there's a definite shortage of healthcare workers uh, around the world. So there has been a lot of interest for students to pursue their career in medicine. So we at ANC have been in the um, education placing students for medicine education for the past 10 12 years and they have placed over 1000 1500 students to different parts of the world so the most important thing about choosing medicine if you want to become a doctor in sri lanka is to pick a university that's under the medical council sri lankan medical council so we have partnered with universities around the world in europe australia um, uk malaysia and uh, graduate pathways to the US and Canada because medicine, being a doctor in US and Canada is a different pathway, it's a longer route. Uh, so we do work with all these universities to make sure students pick the university that fits their budget, uh, fits their um, you know goal of becoming a doctor wherever they want to, not just in Sri Lanka, but you can always practice elsewhere as well. So we have a team who will speak to the students, uh, get their preferences and advice accordingly. So that's where my team um, comes into play in, in terms of student selection of universities. So we do have quite a lot of options. Again, students will think through their results, their budget and the location. Those are main factors that determine. So a great choice of uh, career, being a doctor, rewarding and uh, yes, a lot of hard work. But ANC has the right option for students looking at uh, that career path in the future. 
Okay, interesting. Um, so this question is actually an open-ended question. So anyone from the panel is welcome to answer. Um, I believe that one of the key factors, two of the key factors actually, that a lot of students look into, especially when it comes to their higher education, is number one, looking at potential scholarship opportunities. And number two, guaranteeing that there is a post-study work opportunity which is available in these countries, right? So could you tell me a bit about the opportunities which are available across these universities? for students who are looking at pursuing their higher education in these countries and then later on looking at potential job opportunities as well. Okay, um, when it comes to Canada, they give up to three years maximum for a study period of two years. And also when it comes to Australia, again, depending on the state they are going for and maximum up to four years now they're giving in Tasmania and Melbourne up maximum two years. And also when it comes to UK, again, they are giving two years of post-study work visa. And also US, according to the STEM majors, maximum three years they are getting post-study work visa. And also when it comes to scholarships, uh, I would like to mention like for this October intake, we have two students who have got up to 20,000 Canadian dollars scholarship and they have, both have got their study permits as well. I'll, I'll just briefly add on to that. So thank you, Akshara. Um, <clears throat> that's correct. Uh, in the United States, um, um, after you complete your degree, um, especially for STEM majors, you'll receive up to three years of automatic yes. permission in the United States. Um, many students use that as a as a springboard to uh, um, permanent work um, right. <laughs> permanent work uh, permission. Um, and uh, many stick around, get a green card or what we call a permanent residency. Um, the only thing I would add to that um, is that students do also have the um, ability to uh, do an internship while they are still studying in the United States over the summer. Um, we actually recently had a student from Sri Lanka um, in a master's in engineering program here who participated in an internship this previous summer here in Flagstaff. Um, and as a result, he was actually already offered a job a year before he graduates. So um, right. we think that an internship is also a very valuable part of the experience and, and leads to a lot of opportunities. Yeah, and I can speak to Canada's <clears throat> just very quickly as well. Um, Akshara mentioned that it's a three-year postgraduate work permit. So that's uh, guaranteed to all students as long as the length of their program is two years or longer. Two years. The program they're studying doesn't matter. It's, it's become a nice pathway for uh, ANC students who often do the first two years of their degree in Sri Lanka at ANC and then transfer to Algoma for the final two. By completing the final two years, that still guarantees them the three-year uh, postgraduate work permit. And similar to what Jay mentioned, I mean, this is really, if, if people are interested in permanent residency or even uh, becoming a Canadian citizen down the road, this is really the Right. Way to do it. Canada is very friendly to international students and encouraging them to, to stick around post graduation. Um, I would also like to add that students are also allowed to work 20 hours part time and 40 hours during their semester break in Canada and UK. And when it comes to Australia, again, 40 hours per, uh, per fortnight they are allowed to work during their studies and during the break they have, get more than that. And talking about the intake opportunity, Akshara, could you just tell us a bit about what the intake period is like and also about the deadlines as well? Okay, uh, when it comes to Canada, UK um, and USA, the intakes works in the same line. So the main two intakes are September and also January. And there are some schools which offer a May intake as well. And when it comes to New Zealand, Australia, the main two intakes are July and February. And some schools have an October intake as well. So um, ANC has a very strong number when it comes to um, like alumni and also present students in these countries. The main reason is our transfer program and also the number of direct applications we put in. So we always encourage our students to apply at least four to five months prior to the intake because um, to avoid last minute uh, chaos and all this stuff. So, uh, but the main intake which is going on right now is the January intake. And also um, the next intake is in going, to, going to be in May. Uh, but ANC has a very strong relationship with uh, our partners. So we are able to squeeze in some last minute applications for the January intake as well. Okay, great. That's very interesting. Thank you very much, Akshara. And that brings us to an end of our panel discussion. Um, I'd like to thank each and every one of our panelists for taking time off their busy schedule to be here with us and to provide a very insightful discussion for students who are looking to pursue their higher education. 
in US, UK, Australia, and even Canada as well. And if you do require more information regarding the education fair at ANC, all you have to do is click the link in the caption and it'll take you over to the website and you can get all the information you need from there. So once again, thank you for your participation and we hope you have a pleasant day. Thank you, thank you all.